The old ratios, if you go back and look over the last 50 years again, what is an ounce of silver in relation to an ounce of gold? And we measure differently than most. They use a ratio. We, we do it as a percent. So is silver expressed as a percentage of the price of gold, one ounce versus one ounce. And recently, silver got down to one less than 1% of the price of gold. Right now, it's just above 1.3 in that chart I just showed. In fact, that chart's a little out of date. We're a little higher than we were on that chart. <clears throat> uh, over the last 50 years, if you go back and look at each year, what is the highest reading that silver had each year in relation to gold? And you'll find that of the last 50 years, 20 plus years have reached 2% or more of the price of gold. Today, we're diving into an in-depth analysis by Michael Oliver on the recent developments and trends in the gold, silver, and mining markets. If you're interested in the dynamics of precious metals and their implications for the broader economy, this video is for you. Oliver's expertise provides us with a comprehensive understanding of the current market conditions and future projections, so let's get started. For the past three and a half years, gold has been relatively stagnant, moving within a narrow 15% range. Despite a brief dip to the dollar wanting 600s in late 2022, the overall movement has been lackluster, boring many investors. In contrast, the miners and silver experienced significant surges in the summer of 2020, but then entered a prolonged downtrend, causing frustration among investors. A notable shift occurred when the GDX, a popular mining ETF, crossed the 31.5 area, signaling a major trend resumption. Currently, it's trading at around 36, having reached 37 plus recently. Since February's low, it has shown remarkable growth. Similarly, silver has experienced a major surge, with a significant annual momentum trend resumption signal just above $1.25, triggering an explosive price increase. Gold, often referred to as the mama market, is now underperforming compared to miners and silver. This underperformance is illustrated by charts showing silver's relationship to gold since 2020. Despite a zigzag decline in performance over the past three years, silver has recently broken out, indicating a shift back to our performance mode against gold. The same trend is observed with gold miners, which have been trapped in a downtrend channel for three and a half years, but have now broken free. Before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more expert insights and analysis. We defined a, remember for the last three and a half years, so gold has been in a range, really. Uh, it had one plunge that down in the 1600s in late 2022, but basically if you chopped off that four or six weeks below that prior floor, gold was in a 15% range for three and a half years. I mean, wow, it's a, that's extremely narrow, extremely dull, and it bored everybody to death. Okay. Now, but during that time, the miners and silver, which had a huge surge into the summer of 2020, vastly beating gold in that surge, uh, went into a downward gradual staircase. And which wore everybody out. You know, oh, it's never going up. It's, you know, what am I doing here, et cetera, et cetera. And crossing above 31 and a half area on GDX, which is a very popular mining ETF, we had a major, major trend resumption buy signal. Now, right now on a dip, it's trading at 36. It was been up to 37 plus recently. <clears throat> so since the February low, it's really exploded in percent basis. Same time, silver has had a major surge, and we had a uh, what we call a, ma a major annual momentum trend resumption signal. Not that we were in a negative trend, we were in a boring trend, okay, but it resumed and said, I'm awake, okay. And that price was just above $25, was our trigger number there. And of course, we've exploded since, percent-wise. Uh, and gold is obviously the mama market, so you always have to watch gold, but gold is now underperforming its miners and silver. Uh, in fact, I, I sent you some charts that you might want to share that are uh, that show uh, that the top chart shows silver in relationship to gold going back to 2020 when we had that big surge in silver relative to gold. Therefore, silver outperformed. And as you can see on that top chart, since then, there's been a staircasing zigzag decline in that performance readings by silver, meaning it was underperforming over the last three years or so. Well, that ended 
It's over. That has had a major breakout in the last month or so. And it says, okay, now silver is back to an outperform mode versus the mother metal. Same is true with the gold miners. And as you can see on that, there's a, a downtrend channel that it was stuck in for the last three and a half years. And it has blown through it as of a month ago. <clears throat> so the indications we've got from our annual momentum trend resumption, you know, measuring silver by itself, gold miners, etc., is thumbs up. And when we measure the spread relationship, they're thumbs up. Now, what's the importance of the spreads? If you go back and look at the acceleration phases, particularly like in 1979 through 1980, prior to the 1980 peak in gold and silver, silver accelerated versus gold. Okay. In other words, it did the same thing it just begun to do a month ago, which is to say, not only am I turning up, but I'm going to turn up more than gold. So we have technical reasons to believe, to argue, and we do argue and pound the table about it, that we are now in an acceleration phase in the monetary metals. And that the best place to be within that context is silver and the gold miners. <clears throat> and I think we're getting definite recognition from asset managers too, that miners are a place to be. We've seen some big asset managers in the last several months position themselves in the mining sector which uh, is the most undervalued time in its history in terms of its relation to gold or in terms of its relation to the stock market. So it's a place to be. Just, well, they're undervalued to the, to the mama metal. You know, they, they breathe, inhale, exhale. They, they both outperform and underperform, but they tend to outperform when the market's advancing solidly. And of course, for the last three and a half years, gold's been not advancing. So therefore, it was time for the other guys to have a relapse. But now that we're net trend advancing again in all three categories, uh, the two underdogs are now outperformers again. Uh, and this is the tradition. Well, like look at the summer of 2020 rally. Uh, silver in price went from uh, we had a buy signal at $19.50. And a couple of several months later, it was what? $30. Huge percent move. Gold didn't. Gold had a big move, too. But it only went from like 1450 to 2000 so percent wise far less than what silver did so it's typical during strong phases in the monetary metals on the upside that silver will outperform gold uh, and now you know historically if you look at the just look at an idiot price chart going back 50 years let's say monthly bar chart of gold and you'll notice there was a high in 2011 at just below 2000 1920 dollars then there was a high in 2020 in that summer rally at 2070 to $1,070. Okay, so $150 higher than it was 10 years prior. Uh, and then now we're 30, uh, we reached up to uh, 23, 2450 recently. Uh, but we're emerging out above this gradually rising price pattern. But we're above both of those prior highs. Okay, look at copper, it's very interesting there. We know for the last couple of years that fundamental uh, analysts in that arena have said, boy, we have a real tight supply problem coming up. Uh, and there was there's just not enough production of copper that when demand hits, it's, we're going to have a problem. And now all of a sudden you're seeing the technicals of it. Uh, actually, we get a buy signal some months ago, but uh, it's now merged above its two prior highs. One was in 2011 when it hit $4.60. And then the other one was in 2022 and copper hit just above five. And then recently we shot up to 530. Now it's also accelerating out above its prior gradual ascending highs. <clears throat> and we have momentum reasons to argue that. And when you look at silver, well, what's its prior highs? $50. Okay, well, doesn't look like it's accelerating yet. Uh, give it a chance. Give it a chance. Uh, and we think you know, highly likely those two peaks at 50 over the last 50 years will be gone uh, within months. That will be considered a breakout. We don't. We look at momentum and momentum is already, as far as we're concerned, broken out enough to say you know, the sky's the limit now. Uh, the old ratios, if you go back and look over the last 50 years again, what is an ounce of silver in relation to an ounce of gold? And we measure differently than most. They use a ratio. We, we do it as a percent. So is silver expressed as a percentage of the price of gold, one ounce versus one ounce. And recently, silver got down to one less than 1% of the price of gold 
Right now, it's just above 1.3 in that chart I just showed. In fact, that chart's a little out of date. We're a little higher than we were on that chart. <clears throat> uh, over the last 50 years, if you go back and look at each year, what is the highest reading that silver had each year in relation to gold? And you'll find that of the last 50 years, 20 plus years have reached 2% or more of the price of gold. Oliver emphasizes the importance of spread relationships in the market. Historical data from 1979 to 1980 shows that silver accelerated versus gold before the peak in 1980. This trend seems to be repeating now, suggesting an acceleration phase in monetary metals. The best positions in this context are silver and gold miners. Asset managers are recognizing this, with significant positions being taken in the mining sector, which is at its most undervalued point in history relative to gold and the stock market. Historically, during strong phases in the monetary metals, silver tends to outperform gold. This was evident in the summer of 2020 when silver saw a significant price increase from $1.1950 to $1.30, while gold's increase was comparatively modest. This pattern is typical, with silver showing higher percentage gains during bullish phases. Looking at long-term price charts, gold reached highs in 2011 at $1.1920 and in 2020 at 1270 Recently, it has moved above these highs, indicating a potential breakout. Copper is also showing interesting trends, with analysts predicting tight supply and increased demand. Copper recently broke out above its prior highs from 2011 and 2022, signaling a potential acceleration phase. Well, just sit back for a minute, do your math, you know, 2% of, uh, let's say, gold's, uh, well, you know, even $2,500 gold, 2% would be $50 silver. Okay, so silver just getting up to its normal ratio that it's seen routinely over the last 50 years would be astounding for the net price expression of silver. Now, we don't think gold is going to peak at 2,500. Uh, we think that's going to be a, a launch zone that says we're going a lot higher, a lot faster. So anyway, so where silver might be in this over the next year in terms of net price could be awesome. I mean, it could be a couple hundred dollars, frankly. Uh, is our assessment. We're not going to predict that. We don't have a specific way to do that except to say, look at its normal ratio to gold over the last 50 years and see how many times it has frequently gotten up to 2% or even 2.5% of the price of gold. It's almost common. And right now we're only just above 1.3%. Usually those spreads don't work that way. In other words, we don't get silver gaining to gold because gold goes down more. That just doesn't happen. The spread is almost always 99% an expression of net price gain by silver versus gold. Uh, you go back through history and study the spread and you'll see, no, uh, silver doesn't gain versus gold in the downside. It usually loses versus gold in the downside. Uh, so anyway, no, that's not to be expected. And, and sure enough, that's not what's happened. In October of 2020, MSA put out a report said the commodity explosion's coming. We used the word commodity explosion. Back then, the Bloomberg Commodity Index was trading at 70. Its low had been in late 2020, about 60. Okay, <clears throat> It went from our buy signal about 70, and went to 140 over the next two years. And by early 2022, it had gone from 70 to 140. So that was its first major resurgent bull leg. After years of pullback, its peak readings were in 2008. Bloomberg then was 230-something. It dropped all the way down to 60, so it had a huge decline in commodity prices. That ended in October 2020 when we had a buy signal. But look at when that occurred. It wasn't coincident with gold. Gold had already gone to 2000 in the summer of 2020, well before commodities even decided to turn up. This time it's different. Now we're getting a resurgence again in commodities after the pullback since early 2022. We had a correction back down to under 100 on Bloomberg. Right now it's 106, 107. <clears throat> we had a breakout a couple of months ago at 101. It says, okay, we're back in the upside. Next, next up leg is about to occur. And one of the leaders this time is copper. Silver, although not yet at $1.50, is expected to break through this level soon. Historical ratios of silver to gold indicate that silver reaching 2% of gold's price is common. With gold potentially moving much higher than Tauna 2500, silver could see significant price increases, possibly reaching a couple hundred dollars. 
The commodity markets are also experiencing a resurgence. The Bloomberg Commodity Index, which hit a low in late 2020, has shown significant gains, indicating a new bullish phase. Copper and grains are leading this resurgence, with basic foodstuffs like wheat, soybeans, corn and rice breaking out. This rise in commodity prices is expected to impact the Consumer Price Index CPI and Producer Price Index PPI, creating challenges for the Federal Reserve. Despite efforts to control inflation, commodity prices are expected to continue rising, affecting various economic sectors. Companies like Red Lobster and McDonald's are already feeling the impact, with lower-income consumers struggling to keep up with rising costs. Uh, and I know everybody watches crude oil, and you, know, you see it on the financial TV channel. Don't watch it. Yeah, it's going to go up with commodities and natural gas as well. Those led that last bull leg in commodities from late 2020 to 2022. They were percentage leaders. Everything went up too, but th they were leaders. This time around, copper looks like it's gonna be a leader and grains. Now, you know, get, putting gasoline in your tank, it, it, you know, is painful to the average American, especially middle class, lower middle class. Uh, but putting food on your table is also painful. And uh, we had major breakout in wheat a, a month or two ago. It's already gone up about 80 cents a, a bushel. Soybeans and corn look like they're very close. Rice is also broken out. So basic foodstuffs of the world are now breaking out. So the Bloomberg is turned up again. But this time around, the leadership is going to be in another painful arena, and that's food. Uh, now, I know this is going to really mess up the Fed, and I'm all for it. Uh, they have two mandates. You know, one is to, quote, uh, keep inflation down. Of course, they misdefine it only as commodity inflation uh, and such and related. And they don't care when they inflate stock prices. That's OK. You know, we, they're all for that. Uh, but when they inflate the price of corn, we don't want that corn farmer getting rich because that hurts us, you know. So they try to suppress it. But I'll tell you what, the Bloomberg's going to overtake them. Uh, commodities are going up despite their efforts. And in about three months, I'd say, after this upturn we've already seen in the Bloomberg, you're probably going to start to see the CPI and the, poll and the producer price index also reflect that. In which case, they're going to have a real pickle because if they still stick to their we're going to keep it tight policy. The data points on the other side are going to get sharply worse. We're already seeing the evidence. You know, the unemployment is really not what it looks like. So when you get a look under the surface, there's other data points. I mean, we've had companies like, well, you know, Red Lobster just declared bankruptcy. OK, uh, <laughs> it's an average family's place to go have food. McDonald's has done a study uh, and they're having a real problem in their view. And they've expressed this publicly with lower income people consumption of their products. They can tell that the lower income clientele that they have is hurting. And they've stated this outright. And uh, Target the other day just announced they're going to cut prices of 5,000 products.